In this video I'm gonna show you how to backup your Palo Alto configuration to a Linux server using just a script that will connect to the file and download this configuration. So in order to be able to connect from a Linux server to the file, you need first to allow this connection at the file. So we're gonna go first to network. I'm using Panorama, but you might as well configure your file using your own file. I just have Panorama in my lab, that's why I'm using it. So we go to interface management, and you need to, if you don't have one profile allowing HTTPS, which is the one that we need, you need to create one. I created another one called admin, and I'm allowing, besides HTTPS, which is the protocol we need, I'm allowing SSH, ping, and user ID. But like I said, HTTPS is mandatory. After that, we need to add this profile to an interface, the interface that we're gonna use to access the file. So if I go to interfaces, ethernet, I'm using the inside interface to access my file since my Linux is, my, is in my inside zone. So if I click on ethernet12 and go to advanced, I have my new management profile selected. And the last thing would be, under policies, of course, you need to allow HTTPS to the file. My rule should be this one. So I'm allowing the network where my Linux is, which is 10.0.1.1. I think my Linux has the IP address .17 in the end. And as destination, is the interface for my file and the application SSL. Okay, I already have committed this configuration. So now we're gonna jump to our Linux server. Just quick, the YouTube analytics show us that 93% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribers yet. If you're enjoying this video, one huge thing that you can do for us is to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. As a Linux server, I have Ubuntu and there we need to install some Python packages. I'm assuming you already have Python 3 on your, on your Linux, otherwise you have to install it. And after installing it, install pip, sorry, python3 pip. That's how you do. I already have pip installed. That's why it's showing this message. It's already in the newest version. Now we're gonna use pip to install a package called pen minus python. So pip install pen minus python. I already have this installed also. So requirement already satisfied. Otherwise, if you don't have this, your Linux should install this package. So let's take a look at the installation. Pinx API, pinx API dot py. This is the file that we're gonna be using to access our file. And if you do double dashes version, you're gonna see the version. The current version now, at the time of this video, is the 0.22.0. Okay, now if you type pen x api dot pi, py, double dash help, you're gonna see a list of arguments that this command supports. And we're gonna use a couple of them. We're gonna use the, first of all, the pen x api, First one we're gonna use is the minus T, which is the tag. Should be here on the bottom there. Tag. And we're gonna enter as a tag the name of the file, PAVM. This tag will be useful later, so we can reference this tag. And we don't need to enter any username and passwords anymore. The credentials are gonna be saved as an API key. The next one is minus H. Sorry, minus H. And the minus H should be more or less here, hostname. And we're gonna enter my hostname is the PAVM minus inside.netsums.com. This is gonna resolve to the inside interface of my firewall. And then minus L. This is here, API underscore username. You can use it only entering the username or you can enter in this format colon and then the password. I'm just gonna enter the username. 
and then it's going to ask me later for the password you're going to see and then the minus k minus k should be on top it's this one here we're asking this command pinx api to download the generated api key that the file is going to give us and all this information we're going to save on a file called pen rc as you can see here my file is going to be located in my home folder but in your case if you're in a company and more people need access to this file so i would recommend you to save it somewhere as for example a shared folder and use the linux permissions to allow or deny the access to this file you can make a group i don't know palo alto api and add the users to this group and only allow this group to read this file for example you can talk to your linux administrator in your company for sure it's going to be able to help you to save this file securely okay now i'm going to press enter password key generation success we're going to take a look now at this file so cat This is what the file now contains. Contains the date when this key was generated. Contains the host name, the tag that I entered, and the API key. This is the API key. This key is like username and password together. I'm gonna change the permission of this file just as an exercise. There you go. Now, LSLA, you can see that I, the only one who has access to the file, and for me it's read and write, and nobody else has access to it. So the next thing we're going to do is to download the file configuration. So for that, Penx API, oh, API. So now we use the tag again. And with this tag, the Penex API is going to find the, the API key and be able to access the file without me adding any username and password at this command now. So now we need the capital letter X, R, and O. I'm going to show you soon what these mean. And the command that we want to enter is show config running. So capital letter X. This means convert text command to XML. So the output is going to be in XML format. If you don't need this, if you don't want this, you can take a look at these options and, and choose something else for you. There's an option here also minus J for JSON. The R means print result content when printing response. And the O should be more on top here, command execute operational command the o allows us to enter a command that the file understands and then we can add the the cli command just like this show config running so i'm going to press enter and there's my file configuration the whole thing is here just going to use with a j j should be here yeah okay the position was wrong so J is in JSON format now. Yeah, so what would be the next steps for you? I would suggest you to use the cron tab, cron tab minus E, and schedule this command, maybe once a, an hour as you wish, and save it to somewhere else with a date. That you can have the dates on the, uh, dates in the, in the file name, so you can have the file names sorted by date. And you can create also another script that goes once a day doing some housekeeping, cleaning up um, configurations, maybe older than, I don't know, one month, one week, wherever you want. You can play around with cron tab and with also, with the, let me see here, with all these possibilities that this Python script gives you. There's a lot of stuff, you can take a look, but I thought it would be interesting this video to show you how you can start configuring or how you can access the file using the API just to show you a path that you can automate some of your operational tasks. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you, I could show you something new 
And if yes, please subscribe to this channel. It will help us a lot with, when, whenever we have more subscriptions. And you also get offered some videos similar to these ones. You can hit the like button to show the YouTube algorithm that this video is interesting. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.